What's up, everyone? This is Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, we break down episode three of the Halo TV series. And like always, we have the Marsman crew here along with us. And let me introduce you to them again if you haven't watched one of these episodes so far. So to my left is Haki. Hey, guys. Actually, sorry, to my right is Haki. To my left is Langella Kill this guys. time. <laughs> it's all good. So to, to my left is Langella Kill 75. So go ahead. What's up, everybody? So just to give everyone a sense here, I'm all weirded out watching this episode. It's been a day. I've, I've kind of let it soak in to my system a little bit. Um, I, I actually watched the episode twice uh, to give everyone some context here. So, Why? so Why twice, <laughs> two times I watched this. I, I looked at a bunch of different um, you know, content creators viewpoints about how they felt about the episode to kind of get some to broaden my horizons uh, to a certain extent. Um, but I kind of want to get everyone's uh, feelings about how they feel about does this story change your feelings of or this episode change your feelings about the story in general? Because this first half is a, a non-spoiler section. So if you watch the previous reviews that we've done before, basically the first half of this video, we want to do a non-spoiler section. So if you want to go watch the episode yourself, you can. Then the second part of this is going to be a spoiler discussion. So just to get us started today... What were your general like? Did you feel like this changed your outlook on the on the show itself? I'll go first. I am not convinced that this is going to change my feelings going forward. I gave my ultimatum last week about certain things I didn't want to see happen, and by God, they they barely skimmed past one of the biggest things that I was just just so like afraid that was going to happen uh, in this show where. Uh, I don't want to make any spoilers, but last week I said if they make Cortana to be like a person that's just a mind reader, I was going to lose my mind and just stop and just like stop watching. And boy, did they barely skim by that without really blowing it. So I, I'm still on the fence. I, I, I'm not like I'm done watching it. I'm going to keep watching it for sure, but I'm still like I, I, I just don't really understand the moment, some moments of the show that writers will pick and choose what things they keep lore material and what things they just want to make up and just change completely so i want to let's start with langella kill first what does, does this does this episode change your feelings about the show in general or um, is it still was, just the same? i was very down on the show after episode two um episode three did not put me back on the bandwagon um, but I did feel overall that it was better uh, than season two. I mean, than episode two. Um, but I am very hesitant. Um, you know, this just feels like for for big Halo fanatics uh, like us, it just feels like this show is not meant for us. And mm -hmm. it's a bit disappointing. It's hard to carp, uh, compartmentalize that. Um, so I'm still down on the show, not as down as I was last week. So that's what I'll probably uh, leave it at. So, Haki, how do you feel? Yeah, you, feel like you want to puke? Yeah, you, uh... <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know, man. There was a lot of weird stuff in this episode. Um, we'll obviously get you know into it a little later. Um, I'm embarrassed. Yeah, I, I got to get my point system right. I'm embarrassed that I gave a six-two to the last episode because what I want to give this episode is is lower than that, but it was better than. Like Langella Kill said, it was better than uh, episode two, but it was just like on the weirdo factor, it was like a 10 out of 10. So I don't know. It it, it doesn't, like you guys are saying, it doesn't really uh, put my mind at ease when it comes to, you know, what the next few episodes, how many episodes are there? Eight, right? I or think there's like supposed that? to be eight. I, I could be wrong. I have to really uh, look it into it. I looked at it today. Nine. 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 Be well, nine, yeah. nine. So two episodes that feels like they just wasted. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's 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 jump into. It. So first off, as I mentioned before, guys, and, and and anyone watching for the first time, we try to be positive here on Marsman Game. We try to be as positive as we can, and sometimes where it seems like it's not possible, um, we try. So what I want us to do is talk about some positives that we came across from this episode. Whether how difficult it may be, you got to come up with some uh, some some positives. So I'll start off. I'll start off first here. Um, the first positive I have was that CGI was not, feels like it wasn't done by us here at Marsman Gaming. It felt like it was actually done by professionals to a certain yeah. degree. 
where one of the scenes, I'm not going to ruin it for everyone, but it was one of the scenes you saw in the first trailers from the Halo TV series with Maki and the Worms, if, you, if you're sure you've seen it before, um, they basically, that scene that got everyone hyped in the beginning, that was shown here. And boy, was it well done. I thought it was had that, that scary element to it. It had the fact that, you know, like they actually looked realistic and the, the, you know, the soldiers were being beat up and everything and that looked realistic. So I like the fact that the CGI actually looked l realistic versus previous episodes. We see Elites look like buses. We see, you know, guns look like they're, they're cardboard boxes. They're just thrown on the floor. Like the, the, there was actually a scene. If you, there's like, some really crazy things you notice if you like freeze frame some of the CGI moments of the show yeah. where like in the first episode, uh, I forgot the name of the Spartan picks up a plasma pistol. There's a part where you see it's not colored in. It's a cardboard box. Like there's a CGI like cut out. You can actually <laughs> see it. You can <laughs> actually <laughs> see it. And I was yeah. sitting there just like, yo, you got you got you guys. You gotta, you gotta get this thing over that, dude. I gotta look. Dude, that it's up. right in the beginning. It's like right in the very beginning, where like she really shoots. She's like aiming the plasma yeah. pistol at the elite. There's a scene where she's like picks it up like this, and it's just a cardboard box. It's like a cardboard plasma pistol, no coloring or like anything. She's holding, a she's holding like something she's about to throw into the recycling bin. Like it's just like yeah. it's like honestly like. It, but this time it didn't look like that. It didn't see. There wasn't any times where I saw someone memeing about. Like the fact that they could see right through the CGI, like it actually looked decent. So that's one positive I could definitely take away from this. The the CGI looked pretty good. So let's start with Langella Kill. What's one positive that you saw that you saw here? Yeah, and I I agree with you on the CGI, um, and also you know the environment um, continues to hold up. Like when you look at the space and you look at the world and you look at the planes on both the Covenant and humans, that have held up pretty well. But another different positive output, um, which was one thing I was very nervous on, I actually thought Cortana looked pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. We'll get into things I don't like about <laughs> about that situation. But the look of Cortana, she had a bluish hue to her, which was good, right? Again, it was like, it's such an easy layup. Just do it. So she's a bit bluish. And I thought she looked pretty good and sounded good. Uh, again, I really liked uh, how the voice actor did uh for her this episode so I, I was a thumbs up on cortana's appearance and voice so hucky what's one positive you have for this one yeah so um and again not to piggyback off you guys i mean it's uh there there was only a few positives that, that you could really point out but um uh i thought the worms not only the look of the worms were cool but I really didn't know what they were until it kind of clicked in my head and I had to look it up a little bit, but yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. Are those not the hunters? They are like the, yes, the are. Worms from the hunters, right? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I, I thought that was cool. Cause right before the scene where the worms come out, like you see, I don't know if the, uh, I forgot her, her name. Maki. Uh, yeah. Maki. Maki, right. She's like talking to something or, or she's talking to something. It looks like, and you see like it's leg. And the worms like go down its leg, you know, or something like that. And, and right there, I was like, oh man, that's, that's like a hunter, like all the worms coming out of the hunter, you know, the armor or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I thought that was cool. Um, there was, you know, a couple other positives. I'll pull the um, the sound of the magnum that the um, that the uh, commander I, I, shot. Yeah, the commander. Yep. Yeah, right. I thought that was cool. Like, I liked how it wasn't just a battle rifle or assault rifle. Like, he had a magnum, and it sounded like it sounded like the Halo pistol, you know. So. Mm -hmm. No, well, listen, I, I I agree with you. I thought the sound design was pretty good. They 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 stay true to the Halo sounds. Like they that is one thing the show does. They they actually like they, the thing, yeah they that's, that's like one of the few things that they say. All right, let's actually copy this because it's already made. Like we could just take it and just use it for our purposes, and they do. Like that's that's a good thing. Um, what another positive, and this is like like you said, there's not really a lot of positives here, but I'll I'll name another one. The fact that we're uh, you know we're getting to a part of the story where it's going to open up to be more conflict. Like I feel like to this point in time, there hasn't really been a lot of conflict to really go off of. Like there, this first episode had actual fighting. Like this episode. The only bullets that were ever shot were from like the UNSC fighting one scene and that's it. Like no one else shot a bullet the entire time. Remember, I get it. You know, people are like, wow, it's, I suppose you want this to be a video game. Well, it's based off a of video game. It's a sci-fi shooter story. It's a sci-fi military story. And you've seen 
since episode one, there's been maybe five shots of bullets that have, have flown. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, at some point, Master Chief's a super soldier. He's done a lot more talking than actually fighting in combat. So, I mean, like, it, it feels like he's becoming a master politician rather than being a master soldier itself. So the point is, I'm least we're seeing some story arcs are now starting to become more intense. As much as I don't really like Quan, at least start you're going to start to see that Quan's story is now going to get more intense, whether you like it or not. And you'll see more things with that. Soren will now be involved in an actual story that will be combat. You know, Chief, wh where he's going, is going to have some sort of prob probably some combat. Maki, if you like it or not, it's probably going to have some combat. All of these parts are now with either one, one of them is going to intertwine and they're going to combat each other or they're doing all different things and they're all going to be doing their own, you know, conflicts, right? They're all getting into that middle portion of, of any story that it's going to get some issues going to happen. And now you have to deal with it. I like that part. That's the part of stories that you want to see tension. You want to see tension. You want to see combat, you want to see conflict, right? For past two episodes, I really haven't seen that. You really seen a lot of talking, a lot of buildup. Now it's actually going to be time we see some of these issues come to fruition. So I'm looking actually forward to episode four because I want to see, do they actually match some of the combat they had in episode one? Because I thought that was actually one of the, probably the better, it was probably the, to my opinion, probably the best episode so far because there was actually a lot of things that you saw that were really good about that one. Like they had a lot of like combat, a lot of like story things that were really close. And I want to see that again for episode four. So I like the fact you started to see some of that kind of being built and then thrown into different directions. So I was one another positive in mind. And it, it might be difficult for you guys to have another positive, like, but like a mix. That was like a positive negative. There. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it kind of is. Yeah. So is there another positive for that each you guys have? Jill Kill, do you want to go? Do you have another one for me? Or, or is that kind of, uh, that kind of use all the positives? Well, I think we, I honestly think we nailed it <clears throat> with the positives because it wasn't a lot. Um, but what I will, they're butchering, but also some of the side characters, I think. Um, I like, and you know, Soren continues. I, I like the way that they continue with the Soren character. I like Silver Team's character, and I don't know about you guys, but I feel the best part of this show is the Covenant. Um, when the Covenant is involved, that's when I'm most intrigued uh, mm -hmm. with this show so far. Um, so whenever I get to see the elites close up, right? Because farther back, you know, you started to see some of the CGI faults, but close up, the elites look good. And so you want to see more elites. I want to see more cover. Um, so seeing them in this episode a little bit more than last ep last week is a positive for me. Mm -hmm. uh, Aki, do you have another positive? Yeah, so uh, I, was, I was just really trying to think. <laughs> think, think positive. <laughs> like, I, you know, I don't know uh, Angelica was going. So, um and again, I, I'm going to go back to kind of like Langelico said, the, the elites, even the prophets, when they had their small little um, talk with Maki, they looked good. Um, and not to get into any spoilers, but um, when Master Chief and Cortana, you know, get together for the first time, you know, you can see a little conflict there. And then it, it was good to see a little bit of, of progression in a positive way. Uh, but we can get into that, um, you know, in the second half of uh, mm -hmm. uh of the of the podcast but i i think it was uh there hopefully should be some good things to come i hope yeah no i agree so okay so with positives out of the way now we got to talk about the critical negatives that we need to talk about like there's a lot of there's a lot of things here that i could say um so i'll start us off with a negative uh whew, i have so many in my mind right now Let's, I want to narrow it down. I don't want to break everyone's negatives, but one of the biggest things I noticed right away about the show was one, the writing either doesn't make any sense or two, they find ways to make things just so much more uncomfortable than they need to be. Like, I, I think the negative part, in my opinion, it, I, writing feels like I could, that's like encompasses everything about the show, but the bad writing in general, like when you take, when you take priority in things that, one don't matter at all like like a like quan story or things like that that like you put time and minutes into developing a character that doesn't really matter to this point or two make time of the show which only has nine episodes to focus on things that are cringeworthy like this this episode alone 
had more cringeworthy things than I think my entire life I've watched in a TV show before. Like I, I've never seen like at one times you'll like I'm uh, you know if you're a fan of anime you like you watch an anime you're like oh, okay that was like way too weird like that was a little weird for my taste and then you watch like another show you're like okay that was kind of weird but I never once said in one episode that I have more cringeworthy moments than I could be like just in general. Right. And that's just a weird thing to talk about. And it feels like in this writing in general, they're they're just taking things into a drastically weird direction that is not one doesn't make sense or two. It's just like over the top that like it's just you're not it's almost like they're taking the story and saying we hate the story and we're going to change it every facet to kind of make Halo fans angry. It kind of feels like the writing is to piss off Halo fans. It kind of feels like to this point. Um, and I really think that's a major negative. And this episode kind of encompasses that in a lot of ways. So I, I can keep going about this. But let's let's go hockey this time. What, what's one negative that you have? Yeah, so like cringeworthy is almost an understatement, right? So, I mean, and I was texting you guys during, like, during the first just – 20 minutes of the show half an hour of the show like the, the opening scene with maki and uh and 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 the the other boy is just so weird they, they have to be no more than 10 years old and it's weird to even bring it up but like they're they have a close-in of, of them like kissing and stuff like that all they had to do was just make that maki's brother and like <laughs> it would have been the same impactful story like you know whatever planet they were on you know the the brother gets killed by by um you know the those guards or whatever they were and you know they they're coming down it's not and brother, right? or assuming it's a little boy oh my right? god yeah no, no, that's not even that's oh not even god, that's yeah, not even that would be even i imagine they come out next episode and she says oh that was my <laughs> brother like that would be even more messed up like it was just weird it was really weird and it just set like a super weird tone to like start the show and then yeah another negative i can get into it was another 25 minutes after like the first half an hour of the show was just weird and it didn't put me in the right state of mind it was it was just weird yeah so angelica what's a negative that you have for this one um again you know you guys both were hit on the cringeworthy part i'll say uh, probably the biggest negative i think uh, that encompasses this episode and, and the show i think um, but I won't say it on this one. What I'll lean into is the lack of fighting. Um, and, you know, you mentioned it before. This is a sci-fi adventure um, without the fighting. And and we've now hit two straight episodes of a lack of fighting. We had one really strong episode, or not episode, but really strong scene in this episode, um, which was the best part of the show, um, you know, this week. So just the lack of fighting i just don't understand it you have nine episodes right you have nine episodes next week is going to hit the fourth episode so you're almost you're practically at the halfway point and outside of the first episode you really haven't had enough fighting in a no. like this is supposed to be a three front war right the rebels versus the unsc unsc versus the rebels unsc versus the covenant the covenant versus unsc and how could you have a lack of conflict? Like that's that's the part that's hard to grasp. So lack of conflict, lack of scenes. Because actually, you know, the few things that they do well, I actually think they choreograph the fighting pretty well. Yeah. But there's not enough. I agree, dude. And, and and like I said, there's a lot of flaws with this. And I'll, I'll jump to another one for mine. Uh, another negative that I feel like this show has is that. It feels like maybe one it's it's underfunded and it feels like they need to one it, what i noticed right away is that they always find ways to like not include aliens like by by just mentioning them to existence rather than actually showing us that they exist like for well, can example I just, can, I, can i just interrupt you real quick Come yeah. on, man the show is 90 million dollars okay mm -hmm. and i had to look it up because i was i was thinking the same thing you're thinking i'll let you continue 90 million dollars so it's 10 million per episode is the same funding that game of thrones had in its early seasons so it's not like they're getting nickel and dimed you know what no, i mean no i get it 90 but million one thing. 90 million and when you compare it to other shows it's not like it's not what disney's putting out for marvel it's not mm -hmm. what the late game of thrones seasons were um the hbo funding 
but it's early HBO Game of Thrones, which I'm not saying is crazy funding, but it's solid funding, ninety million dollars. Now, what what I'll say, what I'll say, what I'll say about that when it compares to Game of Thrones is that Game of Thrones, in essence, when you looked at the, you know, like let's just say White Walkers, that they, they were people that dressed up as White Walkers. They didn't have yeah. a lot of like dragon stuff yet, right? And that's one thing I'll say about. When it comes to Game of Thrones versus Halo is that you need a lot more of that CGI because of aliens itself. But what my biggest problem is, is that they're finding ways to try to make people say, no, those these aliens do exist, but that we're not going to show them like things like I hear them like, well, they're not a, they're not they're not grunts, but they'll uh, they're like the head honchos like like. So you're telling me grunts do exist, right? But you don't show me that they exist or the whole jackal thing, like the, like mentioning the name jackals in any way, but then having Wrath from the previous episode, like climbing up walls and screaming and eating churros and stuff like that. Like you, you could have had a, a jackal. You didn't have to have everyone be jackals, but have Wrath be the only jackal in that room. And I've already already been like, oh, that's so cool because I get to see a jackal what they look like in live action, right? Or the fact that you showed this episode with just like Hockey said, you see a hunter, you see the worms come out of the hunter, and you're like, oh, that's that's the worms in the hunter. Like, yeah, but. Show me the freaking hunter attack. Don't show me the worms. Because, like, yeah, you know what? That was probably the best CGI part of the entire episode, clearly, because that was the only one they used. And probably the best part of the episode. But you had could have easily done something and just had the hunter. Just had the hunter. Make the sounds that the hunter does. Do an attack like the hunter does. And you would have made all the Halo fans happy. Seeing, like, all right, I finally see another alien other than the elite and the, and the prophets. Right? But you didn't do that. You chose to do the easy way out and just claim that these aliens exist and, and just show a the, the backdrop of Hunter and not really give us anything else. And it feels like, you know, what I my fear is, is they're saving all that funding, all that CGI for the last episode. They're saving all that money to build up for the last episode to have conflict and have, have like a battle with multiple aliens in it and everyone's fighting each other, which is going to be cool. But you can't like you got to have more than just that. Like that, that's the point. Now, granted, maybe they're they're hoping that they can get enough interest for the show so that maybe you know that that Paramount can give them another ninety million to like really increase the funding for CGI. Maybe, but that doesn't really get me excited because it's like so you're giving me a bare bones Halo show that doesn't follow the story, doesn't follow the lore, and you're now barely using money to spend on aliens, and like that doesn't really give me a lot of hope for that. Right. So, but that's my negative on this. Um, so Haki, what's, what's a negative that you have for this? Yeah. So I think all those points are, are, are very, very good. Um, and Langella kill hit it on the head. You know, there's, there's, there's no action. There was, and now there's been two episodes, I think without chief shooting a gun, possibly. I mean, I would have to rewatch, but I mean, oh, you know, right. no, yeah. Yep. Like that's two episodes where chief, does not shoot one gun, one bullet. And that's not even my negative. My negative, which is obviously the elephant in the room, I mean, everyone everyone that knows Chief has almost never seen his helmet off, right? He has now had his helmet off nonstop for two straight episodes. He doesn't even put his helmet on in this episode, I'm pretty sure he just has it in his hand. Is that correct? Yeah. Right, he doesn't even. He just has it in his hand. He's like, I'm, I'm going to my little planet, and like he's all armored up, which is, I'm pretty sure, the first time you see him armored up in the episode, uh, and just, just no helmet, just no helmet the entire episode. It's crazy. I, I don't know if maybe that, maybe that CGI costs a whole bunch to have. No, Chief's but it's a suit. Out. I don't know. It's an actual it's suit. You know, actual you know, suit. Oh, it is. It's, it is. Okay. it's just a suit. He's just made a it's suit. It's a straight up suit. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know, man. That's my negative. So, Lejel Kill, what's your uh, negative? No, nah, it's it's mine. It, it's Master Chief. It's and again, I don't think, and I don't want this to come off that Pablo Schreiber is a bad actor. I think he is just playing a different character. Like mm -hmm. you know, anyone who uh, and I talked to Mars Man and Aki. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the series Mass Effect. It feels like Pablo Schreiber is playing General Shepard in a halo environment right so like or commander shepherd yeah commander um, shepherd he just he he's just not acting like chief and like i get it 
Silver Timeline, and I love how they just keep threw that on us in the beginning, because Silver Timeline just makes it so broad that, okay, maybe there's small changes in the plot, maybe there's small changes in the story, but really what the show is was telling us is that we're changing a vast majority of story and characters, and it's just so crazy to me why they would go this kind of route um, with the main character of Halo as in Master Chief. And the things that and the way he acts and the things that he says and does you know i look at a different show that i also enjoyed witcher and there were a lot of hardcore witcher fans that didn't love them pulling away from the lore and i understand that i do but the one thing you can't like i i can i give shows a chance when they pull away from the lore um i like them to keep close to the lore as possible because the lore is usually good um but what i can't accept is changing main characters that i just don't understand because that's what makes like the show what it is and so the witcher yeah they might have drifted off the lore but you know what they nailed they nailed Geralt they nailed Geralt and so like you have to nail Master Chief and I'm not saying like this is like a bad bad character but it's a different character than than what the Halo universe thinks of no I agree and it's like my comparison of that would be like if the Star Wars Clone Wars or not Clone Wars but like you know the the rebels show the cartoon show took took darth vader and said i don't need no this helmet no more took it off and was rocking just a gas mask of his face the entire time and was like not acting like darth vader like had a flight like had a very out there personality and it was like you're like well this is darth this is our depiction of what darth vader would be like you know every star wars fan would lose their freaking mind because they're like or, no like or if they made princess lay a fly oh wait but that's the that. point that's the point like like make like you know like you change characters to be ap- absolute like opposites of what they are have been forever you know what i mean like it just like it doesn't make sense it doesn't like there's no point you know like it, why it's just angering your fan base now what i want to get to our our ratings for the show yeah. for this episode um so i want to first go with the jello kill uh, 75. I want you to give me your rating and why you gave it that rating. Yeah, and uh, again, I said this show, this episode was better than last week, but it still wasn't a good episode. And so I have it at a four. Um, last week I gave a 3.5. I think it's better than last week's episode, but it is a four to me. Um, the positive is we got more Covenant than we did last week. Um, we got a better, we got a better fight scene than we did last, which we didn't get any last week. So that was a positive. But the negatives continue to feel like the same thing. There are some really dumb side characters that just bore the heck out of me when they're on the screen. And my biggest one is the lack of fighting and just the character arc of Master Chief. And for that, it just, it's its not a, even for generic fans, you know, I just don't feel what's grabbing their attention to keep coming back. Um, I feel like the people who are keep coming back are Halo fans. And you continue to write like, write them away from you like they, it's almost like they're the show writers are trying to push them away so i just don't understand uh the kind of direction they're going so i gave it a four so hockey what's uh what's your rating and why do you think that way yeah so let me just say uh, yeah i said this to you guys before uh we got on here but yeah i mean i'm embarrassed that i gave uh last week's episode of six two i gotta kind of adjust my uh adjust my rating i i, I can't take it back though right so Last week was a 6-2, this was a 6-3. And I think <laughs> if, you know, because I'm not going to give it less, you know, so this is a 6-3. It was a, a, just a tad bit better. Um, probably just because of the worm scene, like the hunter worm scene. Again, the sounds were were cool, gun sounds, music. Um, and then again, we get into spoilers, but the, the little bit of uh, story arc that you begin to see between Chief and Cortana first being like you know chief wants something of it and then it progresses so um i think it was a better episode than last week um i hope all my episodes um from here on our from here on out aren't six two six three six four six five six six i hope that i can get back and 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 i don't know i hope there's an episode that's in the sevens or eights for me but you know, it might just be a, a, you know, it might be a low sixes uh, uh, ratings. I, I'm, I'm hoping it's not, but um, again, only time will tell. So I'm hoping it gets better from here on out. Well, uh, so I'm in that weird spot 
All right. I, I watched, first time I watched this episode, I was livid. I was literally felt like I was betrayed even more than episode two, to be honest with you. I was kind of like, I was on the fringe and I had to watch it again. Like I had to sit that I sit there a barf bag and I just had to sit there throw up a little, watch it again. I watched a lot of content creators, their, 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 their mindsets of when they looked at this and it was weird. Let me tell you, like I watched a lot of, con I watched a lot, a lot, geez, watched a lot of YouTube videos about this and people who I did not expect to like it did like it. People who I thought already loved second episode didn't like this one. And I like, I saw a bunch of different ideas that were flowing and I kind of, I sat back and I said, all right, let me adjust my rating. Cause let me tell you, my rating for this episode was getting close to a two and a half when I first watched it. Um, I, I talked myself out of that and I, I think I'm getting probably closer to like a 3.8. I'm getting probably closer to that and I'm going to give it, I'll be positive. I'll give it a four. I'm going to go with Langelo kill. I'll say this is a four in my opinion, because when my mindset about this episode was that one, you're having literally like a, like last episode was about like political tension, right? That's all it was. It was just politics and funding and all that stuff. And as much as people don't, don't really like that, the, it does build tension and conflict with behind the scenes of conflict itself. And I understood why they did it. I didn't like the episode at all because they changed so much stuff. This episode didn't necessarily have a lot of political conflict. It was all just talking and feeling and, you know, who, what does chief feel and things like that. And obviously like there are some other things like the introduction of Cortana, which I thought was a, was and we'll get into spoilers later, but thought it was a good scene and things like that. Like there are some good aspects of this episode that you can say, okay, they did this okay, and there's some really dumb things that happen and a lot of cringe stuff that happens. So it's like it's a mixed bag. I'm gonna give it a four because I feel like the good things that they did introduce are can be decent if they do it the right way. Then the gross things make me like hit myself in the face and say, how can I give it better than last episode? Because it's just as bad in a lot of ways. But I'm going to give it that four, which is a point higher than my last rating because I felt like the good things from this episode outweighed the any good things that were in the previous episode. So I'm going to give it that four here just because I feel like they can at least run with some of these things a little bit better for for next week. I have like my hopium. My hopium is, is, is off the charts, I guess you could say for next week's episode because of some trailers I saw for next week's episode, which kind of make me see like, okay, maybe there's some things that are going to be built for, for this one. Um, but that's going to be it for our non spoiler section. So if you want to go watch the episode, please go do it. And, and I want you to drop your rating down in the comments below, but please, I would also su suggest if you haven't done so uh, so far, please drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Next up is going to be the spoiler discussion on episode three. So please stick around if you want to hear us rant and ramble about some things we'd like to dis and things we liked and disliked about the episode. So please thank you for watching and stick around for spoilers. All right, guys. Well, spoiler section here. Um, this is gross. <laughs> I, I, I sat through this two times and I, I questioned myself every day when I made myself do that, but let me tell you, this has some weird moments. Um, and let's get right to the spoilers because for I divided this in three sections like I did last week. First 20 minutes, second 20 minutes, third 20 minutes um, to kind of finalize everything. So let's talk about the first, very first thing. Eight minutes in, we got it. We got, no, we're talking about like Maki getting naked. Well, damn, we were close to about seeing kids get naked because kids are about to kiss on this <laughs> show, um, which is cringeworthy um, for sure, man. Um, because it starts out with Maki's backstory and how basically apparently reading a child's book gives you the indication that you should be kissing the person next to you. Um, and she kisses, almost kisses, uh, a boy that we're still debating is, we don't know if it's the brother or not. It's uh, that's we're a weird, assuming not. Oh my we're God. assuming, we're Hope assuming, not. Not. We're assuming not. but we're assuming not, please, please God. It's not, but the point is that this is the scene, I guess they're, they're, they're orphans on this this planet where they're basically working like in the in the the the, the like oil refineries basically uh, uh, like a trash a trash like, heap whatever yeah. you want to call it and you know they they basically are hiding away from guards 
reading the story. They're about to make out, and then the guard catches them. Like, we got to run. Uh, we got to get out of here. The boy gets beat to death within five seconds, um, and the Covenant show up, which, which was probably the better part of that scene. But my opinion on this was, what the hell cringeworthy type of thing? First thing I watch, and let me just tell you, I'm watching this with my girlfriend. I, she, I, I made her sat, sat, sit down with me to kind of maybe get a fresh eye of perspective. Because I was like, all right, you know what? Maybe I hate this so I hate the lore <laughs> stuff. But maybe if I get someone who doesn't really know the lore that much, maybe they can give talk some sense into me and maybe tell me like that this is decent. And let me tell you, first episode having her introduced to it, it was not a good start. <laughs> having kids kissing in the first scene was the weirdest thing to start yeah. out a show with. Oh, um, maybe like oh, try to convince them. Oh, so Halo is one of my favorite gaming series. So here's a show that they base off of it. First thing I see are two kids about to kiss. So I, w- I want to get your opinions about what I see here. So, uh, so how can you, what do you think? What do you think, man? We yeah, just- man. Hey, I feel like the FBI bugged my room and was going to bust through the window and then arrest me. Cause I mean, there was literally, I mean, they, I'm pretty sure they touched lips. These, the kids probably weren't, weren't even 10 years old. I mean, it was just weird, man. And again, and it could have just been, and I hope, like we said, I hope it's not now their brother and sister, but it could have just been brother and sister, you know, and the brother dies and the sister's like, oh my God, my brother just died. Covenant comes, you know, takes her away and everything. But like they had to make it weird and they yeah. just, they continued the weirdness and we'll get into the next, literally the next 20 minutes. Like it was just, and then after that, the next, it was just, uh, they didn't stop with the cringe like why did you need to do oh, that no, we'll get to we'll get to the next don't worry we'll get to the next part don't worry we'll get we'll get to you know we'll get to the next part what angela yeah. what do you think of the kids possibly making out what, what do you think that would what's, what's, what will spice up the show a little i guess the whole um, love again, like. well in the beginning i i thought i i really thought that they were um i thought they were brother and sister right it kind of had that brother sister vibe to it until the like it was the most random like the kissing part in the book uh when you say it like it has to happen type of thing so then i was like okay they're not brother and sister this is you know they they kind of did a little side mouth kiss um which was just it was just awkward it was just awkward um then the guards show up like you said they the guard asked you know get back to work and that just you know it set off the kid to say we got to run right so it wasn't like the guard was trying to take the book or anything it, it was just felt just felt awkward um kid gets beat to death covenant shows up they have you know that like this item with them that i guess you know can detect um blessed, blessed ones, ones or detect yeah. you know unusual like spirits or something they didn't really go into it but they like going through they're looking through the monitor and then they walk up to a uh, maki who's a little girl and the thing's going off and this was the best part of it they just launched the guy <laughs> like the guy was gonna beat her he like prongs her and then the elite just launches the dude which was like a cool kind of cool part and then they show that you know the girl has something to her and they take her right so that's kind of setting up how this went down but the kissing thing was just awkward and felt unnecessary like it was just so just out of nowhere there was no was build weird, to it man. but it, it just weird. did a handhold or you know yeah, smirk to each other geez, it man. just felt like just weird it just felt weird Dude, like you, you could have done the same thing with having these kids, just like you said, like just like, like hiding, just like we have to get out of here, like we, we got to get out of here together. And then all of a sudden they get caught, the kid gets yeah. beat to death. Like you could have had the kid try to defend her, like get beat to death, and then like she's like about to get killed, and that's when the elites show up. Like you could have done that scene so much better than have yeah. them like do a weird, awkward side kiss. Like you know, it's just like it what. Was- like what are we doing, right? But like I, I agree with you. That scene with the, with the elites show up is the best part of the scene. Like because the elites are like, you know, that you know it's behind it's behind the human, and they're like, no, it's not. It's it is the human. And then they they pick up the girl and they're out, right? And I thought that was a cool part. But go right to cringe to ultra cringe. Fourteen minutes in, so this is only six minutes after the possible side kiss was the assistant was trying to catch a kiss from the clone who's about to die right well set it up right set the scene up what's going so on so basically let's so so, be- so this is where i was literally about to i'm watching the scene like i was i'm watching the show with my girlfriend and i'm about to throw my like pen 
like at the at the television because I'm seeing the clone of of this uh, Halsey clone they're talking to right and I'm sitting there like if this becomes Cortana I'm really gonna mur- like if, like because I my, my just to give some premise if you didn't watch last week's episode of of our show here I said if they made Cortana to be a human that could control people's minds I was gonna be done like I was gonna freak out and have an aneurysm so I was so close when I saw the clone I was like. This thing better not be Cortana. And in that part where Halsey's discussing with the clone about, you know, just asking general questions, the clone, a very interesting scene. The clone is answering questions because it has the same memories as Halsey. So it's mentioning things like, oh, John, John, like saying John's a special one. You knew all along that he was the be- most special one of, all, of them all. Showing that Halsey has these thoughts that she doesn't bring out to the open. Which is an interesting concept because that is lore accurate. That is something that, like me knowing the lore, and I just to give everyone a heads up, I already ordered the Halo Encyclopedia to be shown up to my doorstep, all right? So I can use all I can use the book, like photo evidence of things that they're breaking here. The lore was that Halsey treats John like like a son, basically, because she, he was the most special of all the Spartans, and she had a deeper connection with him. And they're gonna show that in the next episode, but based off a of trailer footage I saw. Um, that like that connection's there and the clone made it pretty clear about that because they ask questions and she's saying John's a special one and you knew like we, we knew all along that he was and you know he's he's different than everyone else and then so guess what we need you're gonna need your brain we need your brain to make the next the Cortana program which the clone knows about so they put her down the ch- table Halsey's out of the room for some reason all of a sudden Mr. Assistant weird weird eyes over here shows up and like, listen, you know, uh, you're going to, it's going to be, uh, it's going to use this is for a better, better purpose. And then leads in for like a little, like, like a little smooch. And then Halsey walks in just in time before we start seeing some weird stuff happen. Um, but let's just tell, just give you a heads up. The clone is sitting there wide awake. Like she's not sleeping. She's like staring at him while he's like, and that was, it was after he gave her the, you know, the thing that freezes her. Yeah, so like froze her yeah. and then just like that was the best part. That was the worst. That was like the like, worst. Yeah. That even gonna have his way a little bit. Like, like thank God Halsey showed up at that point because that was weird. That was a weird thing, man. And I'm just sitting there like, so you go from eight minutes ago, from like six minutes ago, you give us a half kiss, kids kissing scene, and then you go from us having a a dude that's like has a, is a has a necrophiliac. Like it's just like the what, what what are we doing? You know what I mean? Like what 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 why? Why write this? What's the point of writing that scene? And does that make me feel like, like, oh, you know, like th- this really builds the character of the of the clone? Because what happens to the clone? The clone dies in the next three minutes. So there's no point in that, right? There's no point in me feeling bad. For the, I mean, granted, I guess you'll feel bad for clone. Like, yeah, clone's gonna die. The clone was about to get kissed by some weird assistant when she was frozen. Okay, I. <laughs> You didn't have to do that for me to feel bad for the clone because the clone was going to die anyway. Like You didn't have to add that little weird nugget in there unless they're going to do some weird stuff with the assistant down the line with Halsey. But, like, wh- wh- why? There's no point in that. That's what it looks like. Uh, it, but, like, why write that? Like, what, But tell me this. Why does that matter? Why are, we, why are we bringing this to the table where it's like this is a possible small nugget storyline that we could throw in there? Like, no one cares about that. No one no one sits there like this assistant's side story of him adoring Halsey matters. Like this doesn't matter, right? And you're just adding this dumb stuff in there. Just cringe. Just cringe. I just felt gross. So just to give everyone a heads up, first eight, 14 minutes watching having my girlfriend watch a show that she's never even <laughs> seen before. We get a kids kissing scene, and this just is that do some weird stuff. Like, okay. Um, that's a little weird to start a show, guys. Like, start an episode that way. But, yeah, so what's your guys' opinion? Because I, I could talk all day about this. But well, So, well, yeah, go ahead. Let's keep go. going with the scene, right? So they take the brain of the clone to create Cortana, the AI, and they put it in John's brain. Yeah, right? Well, well no, listen, John's we're going to talk about we're gonna talk about that in the 20-minute section because that's at the very 20 okay. minutes. So, But I just okay. want to get your opinion about the assistant, just about the assistant part. You know, what, what's your opinion on that? And then we'll jump to yeah, the next part. I, I, it was another just weird, awkward moment. They're trying to show that the assistant, like you said, adores Halsey. Um, 
but they did it in the most cringiest fashion, like similar to, you know, like you tried to create Maki being hate, hating humans because, and we think because the human killed her boyfriend, right? Like there was just better ways to do it instead of making it extremely awkward and rushed. Um, and that's what it did. Cause like you said, no one cares. Like, I don't care about this scene. It actually just, it's an important scene. And we'll talk about like the importance of it, which I, again, I have problems with it. But like you created an awkward moment in an important scene for no reason. No reason. Like it's important mm -hmm. you're creating Cortana. It's a big moment and you add this really creepy scene um, with that guy. So it just it just adds to what like what are we doing? Yep. No, I agree. Uh Haki, do you have any thoughts on this before we get to the third part of this first section? Yeah, I again I just I feel like I was gonna be getting arrested. Just the, the first scene, and then this almost possible necrophilia, drug the drug the clone. Let me sneak a kiss. Like it was just <laughs> what weird, the, dude. There's, what the there's hell no are we reason. doing? There was, there's no reason. There's literally no reason for the kids kissing or drugging a clone and getting a kiss from my <laughs> coworker. Like I don't need that from my superior. I don't need to drug my superior's clone and kiss her. I don't need that. I don't need it dude it was just like i texted you guys i was like dude i i don't understand i don't understand the first 20 minutes of this episode like it, none of that stuff had to happen so that, that's my thoughts it was just it was messed up so let's let's continue with this because this scene has a second part to it where now uh the brains of the clone which this is more accurate the brains of the clone get basically turned into uh basic data which is then used to create cortana right because this is literally this part, this part, and this is where, like, I, I mentioned in my, my non-spoiler, where there are some parts that are more accurate. This is one of them, that they take a whole clone of Halsey, makes it out of her own brain, right? And that's why Cortana is so brilliant, because it's basically Halsey, in essence, as, a, as an AI, right? That's basically what it is. Um, so that's what happens. They create Cortana out of the clone's brain. Then they take that, that AI, that the AI Cortana, and instead of making it into a chip, they put the chip into Chi's brain itself. Okay, and this is where it's not lore accurate, it's different because obviously Cortana used to always be a chip that you would just stick in the back of your helmet, and that was the whole point having that chip. And that's what you know, Halo Infinite, if you, you know, 343 might have lost sleep because you know, if you look at Halo Infinite's game story itself. It always revolved around the chip that Chief is missing something in it. Like it doesn't have Cortana and then the weapon, right? The whole point of having the weapon in it. And he's basically trying to get, you know, the weapon back on the chip in his helmet. Like, but in essence, if you're using the logic that the Halo TV series uses, don't worry. You didn't need that because it's typically a part of your body anyway. So, you know, and, and but that, that's the kind of the point that I'm angry about was, the fact that you're embedding the chip into Chief's brain, into his head, without him doing the chip thing, and me and Lajoko talked about this off off screen, was it feels like they're giving an excuse that you don't need to have Chief's armor on in order to contact Cortana, and that is something that I can't really forgive them for because it, it's your like your way of saying we don't need Chief to wear armor. Right, we can just have him talk to Cortana without him ever having. We could be, he could be completely naked. Clearly, which we'll talk about later, he could be naked and just talk to Cortana like she's right there. Right, he doesn't need to have a helmet with a chip in it, which is stupid. In my opinion, it's dumb. You're you're changing that because you're trying to make excuses so that you don't have to wear armor. That's really what you're doing. Like, it, there's one thing like if it's like because you're using it for another reason, but it seems like it's just because you don't want Chief to wear armor. Like it's like your reasoning. To tell the Halo audience is like, well, we, he doesn't need to wear his armor, right? That's why we're not doing it. And I want to get your opinions about this because this is obviously annoying and a big deal uh, because this is Cortana's intro. Like, I mean, I feel like the intro itself was pretty solid, but the fact that this part with Chief's, you know, the, the chip inside of his head rather than in his helmet is kind of dumb to me. So, uh, Lenjo, okay, I'll go with you first because I know me, you talked about this pretty a lot. Yeah. So I want to get and your opinion it, about this. That's ex you exactly had, you know, shared my thoughts on it um that to me is the reason there's no other reason why they would do that except to you know give the cape for chief not wearing his stuff right because cortana like you said could either be in a chip 
right? He can present her, right? He can have her his hand out, and she can come out of the the chip. Um, you could put it in UNSC Covenant, whatever systems, and she could present herself that way, right? But she had to be in something, right? Um, now it's just like she's in his brain, and now she can fully operate, um, and and apparently appear in front of anyone through chip through Chief's brain. Right, which is another thing that doesn't really make sense to me, right? Because like, if she's in Chief's brain, how does she present herself in Halsey's office? You know, like that—that that doesn't. I don't understand that. I yeah. don't get it. Um, it, it just—it's just unnecessary. It's just those things where I don't understand why you go that route. Right, I don't understand why you you, you don't go that route, and it's because you know they. It, it's like what Mars Man said, because. It appears in this show. It's more rare to see Chief in full equipment than it is not. That's the real scary part and the real sad part. Yeah. So, Haki, what do you think about that? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think that's the exact reason why they didn't make her into a chip uh, that 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 is put in the back of his helmet because it seems like he's not going to have his helmet on ninety percent of the show when the only action. He's only going to have his helmet on when there's action, and right now. There's only been about 5% action uh, the entire series with him in it, uh, which is unfortunate. I really hope that, um, I hope that A, there's more action, and I think action with Cortana will be cool. Um, again, Cortana looked cool, like the visuals of them doing everything other than the guy trying to kiss the clone, but like from when they stuck the needle in her eye, which was a little gross, to, yeah. you know, them actually... Uh, Halsey being on the computer and looking at the brain and then, you know, putting it again, putting it into the chief's brain, like that stuff was the visuals were cool. You know, she looked like kind of like Langelica said, she looked cool, you know, like I, that CGI was good. Right. But um, yeah, they, they put uh, Cortana in his brain so he doesn't have to wear a helmet. That is the, that is just the straight up truth. And yeah, yeah it's a problem. He's, Master Chief is Master Chief because he has a helmet he's got his armor you know he's a badass and this is not like you guys are saying man this is just not lore yeah no and i think like it's weird because you know chief chief's helmet chief's look is is like idolized in microsoft like that is the face of microsoft right and you would think that now you're taking his helmet off for 90% of the entire show. It's like he's not rep he's not showing that same imagery that Microsoft always pictures as the head, the face of Xbox, right? And that's why I'm kind of confused. And, and we said this before, why Microsoft even let that be the thing? Like, no, like you got to keep like this part of what his character is because that's what makes him the face of Microsoft. Not like Peter, and not saying that, you know, Pablo Shriver is not is a bad actor. It's not like Pablo Shriver's face is like I was gonna say cursed, but is messed up or anything. But like it's chief, like he's playing a character whose face is basically the mask, right? At this point, right? So that's the face of Microsoft. And I didn't mind the intro of Cortana because, like you both said, Cortana's first voice by uh by the same actress that does her voice acting in the games. And she does a very good job at being Cortana in the games, and she does the same good job right now. Um, but the other thing that kind of seems the point, and I don't want to—I I hate harping on this because this is a, something we discussed for episode one and even prequel to the show—was if you got you got uh, and uh, Jen Taylor to be the voice of Cortana, then couldn't you have gotten the voice of of Master Chief uh, Downs um, to be the voice of Master Chief in this show? Um, because you got clearly got the voice of Cortana to be, and yeah, it, it, it could I, with his helmet on. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that, well, listen, on. Cortana doesn't have a helmet. Doesn't have. A, she just has someone voice basically just lip syncing, yeah. and then they just basically yeah. have like you know what I'm saying. Like you could have easily done that. You know what I mean? Like now, granted, I, I'm not saying that oh, they should go back and change. Like no, like I get it. You made your choice. P Pablo Shriver is going to be you know, is going to be the one going forward with this. But Steve Downs' voice is synonymous with Master Chief too. Just like J Jen Taylor's is synonymous with Cortana. And I thought that once you heard her voice, you're like, that's Cortana. Like, and a part of me feels like even with 
if Cortana's not necessarily as blue as I would like her to be, like the voice was already enough that like, I'm like, that's Cortana. That's literally what Cortana would say. And what I've liked too, was a lot of the lore accurate things that they did when Cortana actually meets Chief for the first time in the, in the books and now all that is exactly what, ha what she does say, which is like, okay, so what it tells me is you people did do your research to a certain de degree. It's just you're picking and choosing when you want to use it. That's what annoys me even more. Because it's one thing like, you know what? You didn't pick up a single game and clearly you didn't do that research into Master Chief. Or maybe you did and you just changed it because you wanted to change it. That's the annoying part. Now, I can talk about that all day long, but we got to get to the second half, a second third of this, the second 20 minutes. Um, and the first thing I'll talk about is this new story arc between with Quan and Soren going to back to Magical to take on Venture in the new Rebel Forces. So basically, some, some context here is that basically uh, Quan is being mad annoying uh, to, to Soren this entire time while she's basically, uh, you know, back at his at, at the rubble. Right. And Soren's just trying to be, you know, be the boss. He's ordering people around doing stuff. Quan says, I need to go back to magical. And he's like, no, I'm not taking you back to magical. Like that's not happening. Um, and she's like, well, I, listen, I can, you know, like I, I might, like I'm going to leave or I'll, like he, she's going to do all this different stuff to get back to magical. And he's like, no, I told John, I'm going to keep you safe. I'm keeping you safe here. I'm not going back to magical. Who cares about Venture? He, you know, like, it doesn't matter. You're safe here. She's then she starts throwing in like different things like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to break in. I'm going to break into your ship and I'm going to get to magical myself. And I kind of like the bit, the banter where it's like, she's trying to break into the, break into the ship. And he's like, oh, this is not a UNC ship. This is, uh, you know, that the, the key box is over there. Like trying to like say like, you, what are you doing? You'll know what the hell you're doing. Like you think you know what you're doing, but you really don't. And you know, he's kind of had enough and he, and she's like, listen, you know, I can, I, I, I have connections with the rebels. They, they will pay you for bringing me to there. Like, and like, that'll be worth your while. And he's like, well, you know what? I could also bring you their head, like to venture and they could pay me. So, you know, what, why should I go help you? And then like, he, he basically gives her like the, the line, which I like the most was I can either one, get the money for bringing you back for the rebels, or I'm going to take the money for giving them your head. So either way, it's money to me. And I like my having money. So might as well go do with it. So I want to get your thoughts about this new story arc where now is has Quan and Soren, who Soren is probably the better character that we have on the show so far, going back to Magical to take on Venture and this new group of rebels. So I want to get your feeling about this. I thought it was obviously you need to do something with Soren. Yeah. I mean, you can't just keep Soren on the sidelines. Um, I rather it not have been Quan, but I guess you're going to give Quan that story arc, right? Going back to the Magical with Soren and taking on the rebels. So. I thought, uh, yeah, you know what, you're going to have to do something with Quan, I guess, then this is going to be what you're going to do. Um, I want to get your opinion. So, Haki, what, what do you think about the story arc that they're pushing with Quan and Soren? Yeah, so, again, um, I'm not a fan of Quan. I know you guys are. I know uh, Angela Kill is really the biggest fan of Quan. I just don't think that her story writing is, is that great. Um, again, Soren's pretty cool, so uh, I think he would – probably be the one to carry that story arc um and supposedly venture is, is such uh you know an evil person that hope that there should be some action right there should be we should be able to see soren in action uh, um by god i hope he has a helmet that he can put on <laughs> like i hope there's some type of like battle between him and venture with him in a full spartan suit i think that would be dope to see him um, just going all in as a Spartan, um, you know. I, again, I, I don't. I don't even know what to look forward to <laughs> at this point, you know. Um, but I hope there's. I, I'm just hoping for action, just like Langella Hill said. Like there's just been no action. I just want action. I want Spartans in action as soon as possible. It needs to happen next episode. So. Yeah. So, so Angelica, what did you think about this arc? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it's another, like, setup episode, which we thought last episode was going to be it. So it ended up being this one is going to set up now the rebel uh, conflict. Um, I do like that Soren is involved. It's bringing her over there. You know, Quan, it, it, and I've gone through this, they just, it's just not enticing to me. Um, but 
you know, this is, I think, something that could be intriguing next episode. You get to see what Quan can do. You can hopefully see more personality uh, besides just Quan being like a, a brat, which is kind of what it is at this point. Um, so hopefully you see more. We have found out that, you know, her father had an army um, that had generals in it and that, that they're probably looking for her. Right. So that was interesting. We didn't really get any of that just kind of thrown right on us when she said that, um, because you would think that, you know, that rebel got, you know, that rebel thing got destroyed once the general got killed by the elites. Um, so could this be interesting? Could we see a conflict between rebels and venture and his rebel army? Um, you know, like those things are interesting. And then there's a, another factor we're going to talk about, which is the covenant. Um, they could be involved in this as well. So all those factors coming in feels like it's set up for a very interesting dynamic. Um, but we're going to see how they do it. The big thing to me is action. That's what I want to see. Yep. So um, let's go to the number two. Um, the next part of this is going to be Maki attacks UNSC using the hunter worms. I, I forgot the theme of the worms. I, I have to look back on my, my lore studies here. Um, and, uh, Attacks the ship, uses herself as being a bait, basically. Make her seem like she's innocent, uh, then attacks them and basically just brutalizes everybody and then tries to get information on where is Chief and where is the artifact so she can bring it back to the prophets. Um, so just to give some context to the scene itself, like what happens, basically Maki, uh, you know, smartly plays a plays like a, a victim, saying, and this is where it doesn't really make sense, though, says that the Covenant, it was first off, this is a Covenant ship. It was a Covenant pod um, saying they abandoned the ship because I guess the engine wasn't working. So I guess they just left the human alive, which, you know, it, they, they just do that all the time, apparently. Yeah, okay. um, so that happened. So basically now she's on a pod and it's on its way to the UNSC ship. Now, granted, I thought that the UNSC would do something stupid and not like even attempt to like, check her but they did they actually sat they they said get on the ground put your hands behind your like back like we got to check check her you know make sure she's okay um and, and they actually sat realistically were like made sure she wasn't a bad person but one thing they didn't do was why didn't you just scan the pot you know like just scan the pod for any life forms and you'll notice that there's a bunch of worms hiding in the ceiling that maybe you might have not seen um and that would have figured out everything but Okay, they didn't do that. So, you know, they ask her, we'll help you out. We're here to help you. Very instantly, the worms show up and they start kicking everyone's ass. Now, yep. this is where I kind of start to get very, like, and I, I literally said this out loud, where I, got, I said this out loud when I was watching this the second time. I was like, this is stupid. Where basically she's walking towards all the, all the guards and the captain while everyone's falling back, shooting all the worms. No one single person shoots at Maki the entire time. Everyone's shooting worms, right? No one says this girl just betrayed us and has sent these worms at us. No one pulled their gun to her and shot once. I think the captain did. And it's weird. If you notice this, he shoots toward her and it just nothing happened. Like, it feels like the bullet went right through her, like, or he missed completely like point blank range missed her. Now, what I would have liked about the scene, and this is probably the best scene of the entire episode um, as much as I rag on it, it probably is because it has the most CGI and most action in it. The only action we saw. Um, but what it made this episode more make sense is that Maki had like, you know, a covenant shield because, you know, elites, every elite has a shield over shield on. Like you would think that maybe Maki could have that and it would explain. Or maybe if the captain was like backing up and he's like, you know, how could you do this? It just shoots and just boom, just bounces off like. She wasn't afraid. She knew she wasn't going to get shot and killed. Like, she, she just played you. Like, you know, that would have made been like, wow, that was smart. Like, that would have been really smart. But, like, Maki didn't have that shield. She just, like, walking right toward him, not even thinking that they're going to shoot toward her. It was just, like, kind of like, what? Is it, come on. Like, it, but granted, I'll give, I'll give the fact that, uh, you know, the worms were a pretty good touch. I didn't, like, like, you know, if you saw the trailer, you saw it was going to happen at some point. But, you know, it was a good, it was a good idea. It was a good plot, plot twist there. Um, for to a certain extent, you kind of knew it was going to happen, but you know, it was good to see. And now I'll get into your, I, I want to get your opinions about this. Cause I, I, we already talked about this before, but how did you feel that these were, that the hunters didn't actually just show up themselves? We kind of yeah. want to get your feeling about that. Um, 
this was the best scene. And so I don't, I don't want to nitpick it too harshly, but right before she gets on the pod, you see, like Haki said before, the hunters, right? You can kind of see that they're there. Their presence is there, which was so, like, it kind of it juiced me up. I was like, oh, here we go. Like, this is going to be actually a cool part. Um, I understand being smart, right? Like, they couldn't just have two big hunters run, walk out that. of the pod, right? Because that was too obvious. So they did the worm attack. Um, which was cool. I thought it was cool. I understand what you're saying. Like she was, you know, kind of badass walking towards that. No one's touching her. No one's shooting at her. I think it would have been a nicer touch, more detail oriented if she had an elite shield, um, something, right? Um, but then at the end, when everyone gets killed, they take the commander hostage and she's asking him, where is the base? Right at first, where the artifact? He says, I don't know. Ask the base. He's like, I'm not telling you. And then he's, she stabs him through the eye with her fingernail like so a laser comes out of her fingernail and she stabs him in the eye with it and unfortunately it took like the coolest part of the scene like the whole scene i thought was cool and then it just added the cringe dumbness to it <sighs> which i don't understand so like okay so is she is she part robot is she you know what genetic things have been done to her because that's not normal what that like is that a robotic hand you know, where do you get lasers out of your body? Um, if she had an energy sword and stabbed them, that would have been badass cool. Or she picked up his pistol and blasted him in the face. Right? Like, that would have been cool and make just make more sense. I don't mm -hmm. understand the fingernail laser. That doesn't make sense to me. Um, so you know, you know, what, you know what it tells me? You know what it tells me, Joe the, C, the CGI. It's because the money. We don't have enough money to make a sword. <laughs> Right, we don't have enough money to make to make a knife. Yeah, you we made need a, finger, a fingernail. Yeah, a finger all she does, all she does, is a person, finger sword. If you imagine like being the actor, where you have to like pretend like, oh, I get to like do that when she does does this, like <laughs> your finger. Like, just imagine yeah, you're like, oh, like, well, finger, like, you didn't, like you didn't go have to go heavy CGI for her to pick up the pistol and blast him in the face. Right, <laughs> like she she could have done that, which would have like I know what they they were trying to make Maki a badass. And the scene was pretty solid, but like, I think that would have been more of the badass stuff and maybe potentially her fighting some of the soldiers. You know what I mean? Like you got the worms attacking mad soldiers and maybe some soldiers try to confront her and she, these, you know, she like show her badass. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So like, I don't want to nitpick it hard because this was the best scene in the episode, but like it, it's, again, it just feels like, damn, a missed opportunity to make this like a really cool scene. Um, and like, I do wish at the end, like the worms came back and, and just for I, my opinion and, and formed up into the yeah. hunter at yeah. the end, that would have also been super cool. But again, I, solid scene, uh, missed opportunity, but in my opinion, the best, best scene in the episode. Yeah. Hockey, before I just let you jump in on this, I, I, I thought when Angelica, you said it, imagine like, like after killing all the people, it's just the worms, just it, like the captain, like how would, how would she disarms the captain or something? Right. Like she disarms him and the guns on the ground. And he's just like, what, like, what the, what are you? What, like, what the hell are you doing? And all of a sudden, like the hunter shows up behind, behind him and just grabs him. And then so that's when she interrogates him. Imagine like that was the scene. Like I would have been like, that's like crazy. Like that's like that. Would, that's badass. That's something that like Maki just elevated her cool level like a little bit to like and she did elevate it just, she did like, she did i'm just saying like just, that would have been even better of a scene because you're bringing in lore stuff you're bringing in like the new alien finally like yep. all these things that we all want right and so hockey what what do you think about the scene itself I, before we get to the next part yeah so again I, it, I i think it was definitely the the best scene i know one way they could have ruined it was like had the scientists come out like the weird scientists and pat the girl down and try and kiss her, you know, <laughs> like, you know, but no, no, no. I, I think that was, <laughs> I think that was the best scene again, her just walking, not getting touched by any bullets again, overshield or like, I was thinking maybe a jackal shield. Like she pulls like a jackal shield out or something like, like that would have been cool, you know? Yeah. Um, and again, both of what you guys had said when, um, when you guys had mentioned, the worms not turning into the hunter like if they turn into the hunter and did anything if we just saw the hunter as the character that we know the hunter being like you know 10 12 feet tall just like huge like, that would have been dope uh, but again it, it was the best scene 
um, in the show. You know, it was literally the only action scene. That is why it was one of the best scenes too. It was the only scene that had action. So I mean, yeah. I think they just got they got to get on board with the action. Like that's it. You I know? agree. I agree completely. Um, let's and get more to the last. Yeah, yeah, more covenant, please. Stop, no stop telling scientists. me. Yeah, no stop, <laughs> stop telling yes, me that there's a grunt. Stop telling me that there's a jackal. Show me. Like, can you show me that they exist? Like, geez. Um, yeah. Let's get to the third part. And I want to talk about this relationship between Chief and Cortana. I think when you're looking at the scene between the two, where Chief is right at the very beginning, he was very reluctant about this whole thing. He didn't want Cortana to be attached to him. He didn't want Cortana to be like a babysitter to him, basically. Cortana shows that she has a superior intellect because she's a robotic version of, of Halsey, which is more precise, could do a lot more things faster than anyone else. Um, so she and Halsey gives her the directive to like introduce herself to Master Chief, get on his side, and you know make him start not like say like you, but trust you enough that like he'll let you do what you need to do, um, which kind of gives Halsey that like kind of a mysteriously bad care like a bad person which she is kind of right she created the spartan program she did a lot of shady things behind the scenes and that kind of does a good job of setting her up to be that way but it surprisingly sets cortana to be in a similar light like she's not she has an ulterior purpose at the end of the day because technically cortana wants to take control take control over chief and do whatever she wants because technically she could she could control him completely and just do whatever um, now what I found to be interesting was this, how this, you see this growing of the tension continue was basically you see how like the other Spartans, like silver team, when chief goes to see them, you know, and they're like, yeah, we've already been briefed. We know what, you know, what happened. And we know that Cortana has been included but with you. And all of a sudden Cortana shows up and now you have some like, uh, bad, uh, this, you know, pitter patter, like, you know, issues between chief and Cortana where like, she's like, go away leave i don't want to like i don't want you to be here i don't want to talk to you and she's like i'm introducing myself to the team and he's like just leave and you know it's like a tension and everyone in the room is like an awkward silence like everyone can kind of tell that this is kind of a weird situation here um but it kind of grows pretty quickly when chief starts to like touch he touches the new the artifact again gets more memories he starts to see a lot of things from his past um, but like he's doing things that are just uncharacteristic about him. Like he's getting more emotional without really anything driving him to be that way. And like, he's telling Cortana, like, Hey, open the door, open the door. Like, and then, you know, Halsey says, all right, open the door, open the door for him, touches the, touches the artifact and finally realizes that there's a second one that they have to go find. Right. All these things are just like adding into, you know, this whole lore and everything about it. But the whole point is, is that this relationship between Chief and Cortana has mixed has a, it's a mixed feelings for me. I feel like the good parts is that it gives you the tension that Chief and Cortana aren't on the same page yet. This is not the this is not the relationship we saw from Halo One. You know, this is before Halo One. This is this is Cortana as basically a newborn AI, right? Doesn't really have that connection with anybody yet. She's not like that. You know, she's not connected with Chief at all. Right. We haven't seen that yet. And I think that will be something that you will notice as time progresses. But I want to get your feelings about uh, about what you thought about this, this relationship. And just the beginning, because we're going to talk about the first thing in the last 20 minutes is an interesting scene is interesting scene. But um, the scene between the introduction of Cortana and Chief's relationship, what did you think about you know, how that went? Did they do it the right way? Um, so, Haki, I want you to talk to us first. What do you think about this? Yeah, so I mean, I, I thought the I thought the introduction was was I thought it was good. I, I, I didn't think it was great. Um, I thought it was good to show you know the kind of the disconnect from Master Chief and Cortana. How you know there was a little bit of stubbornness from Master Chief's end, um, and really all Cortana was trying to do was was help him. But you know he was you know being stubborn, saying you know I don't really need that much help. Um, but then you got to see it progress. You know. Um, you did see the, like you said, the awkwardness uh, in front of all the other Spartans when she just randomly shows up without any, you know, uh, any signal or anything like that. Um, and again, everyone's helmets are off in that scene. Um, and it makes sense that Cortana's in his brain. But again, does not make sense. Like Langella Kill said, how she can just um, appear for everyone to see 
again, that's weird. It goes against lore, um, and it just proves that, unfortunately, there might be more helmets off, like, a lot, you know. But, yeah. um, again, you get to see the progression. Um, like you said, he touched the artifact. Um, Halsey also tells her, which we'll get into uh, a little bit later, you know, just kind of be on his side, you know. Like you said, get him to trust you. Um, you know, you're here to help him. Um, and then, you know, she ends up helping him, uh, you know, find out a few things about the other artifact. Obviously, we'll get into that a little later, but um, I thought it was good. Yeah. So, uh, Lejoka, what did you think about this relationship? Yeah, I actually think um, it was one of the better things that they, they did in this episode. Um, you could feel the tension, and then as you gradually go on, she helps him find the planets that he was struggling to find. She helps him open the door to the artifact room. Um, you know, you can, and then Halsey's like kind of, you can also kind of feel the tension between Cortana and Halsey. So it's like, you know, there's a lot of tension going on, um, which is like, I, I thought that's the better thing. So the introduction wasn't bad to me. Um, I just don't, again, it's like those details that, that Haki was talking about. Like, he, he goes in and the Spartans, again, the Silver Team Spartans, they feel more like Spartans. They actually feel like more more like Spartans. And I understand not having helmets, you know, in the barracks because, like, they're, they're making it, you know. But whenever you leave the barracks, I feel the Spartans should be dressed. The Spartans should be dressed. They're Spartans for a reason. Yep. Right? And, like, it just doesn't feel that way right now. But Silver Team's, like, attitude, their comments – um, they feel like Spartans, and that's why they're one of my favorite groups. Because, like, even when Chief came in and said, "Hey, if you have something to say, say it," and they're like, "We've been briefed, and like, we trust you, Chief. Whatever you do, we'll follow." And like, one of the Spartans doesn't even say a word; just gives a head nod. And like, you understand the emotion, and you understand like the tone that the other Spartans set. And so, I just don't understand why that can't rub off on the main Spartan, which is Chief. Mm -hmm. Why isn't he more Spartan-like? And he is not acting like that. You saw him. He got frustrated looking for the planets, right? He was <clears> in <throat> confrontation with Cortana where it was just like, like it was a banter back and forth. So like, I don't know. Like, I, I think Cortana did, like I thought Cortana was written pretty well in this episode. Um, it's just that like, again, it's hard to, it's hard to accept this kind of chief. Yeah. That's it's hard. not, yeah. It's hard I uh, if it's a I random agree. fan watching it, a random person, they're like, you know, like he's acting normal, like he's acting like a normal soldier who's uncertain of himself. But when you know who Master Chief is, and you've played all those games, and you've looked at all the Halos, you're just like, this it's is just not, not him. him. It's not him. No. So it's hard to like, it's hard to fully grasp. It. It, it's hard to grasp it, but hard to accept. But yeah, yeah, I agree with you. And so right from here, we the first scene we get in the last twenty minutes uh, of the show. Chief is random. So we get away from tension to like bitter, 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 batter, like, you know, ranting against each other. Chief randomly is naked and he basically is trying to take off a control trip that's right above his ass. That's going to stop him, stop his emotions um, from being suppressed anymore. And I thought when I first watched this episode, I, I was like, kind of like, what? So we're getting from two kids kissing to an assistant trying to kiss a frozen body, to uh, now Chief getting Master Cheeks, now no longer Master Chief anymore. Um, <laughs> like, like, and so Cortana helps him remove the chip from his ass, basically, to, to get him to feel emotions. And this was the way, this is like, a, just like a, a culmination of scenes that makes Chief look stupid, like, the first one I saw was when Chief was trying to like unhook the bat, the, the the cameras from the ship in the first episode, to to things like you know like other like just other things that he did later on, and this is just another example. Like this is with cameras around you, and he's trying to take out the the control motion controlling chip right in front of everyone. Like I like like at least be like smart about it. But granted, with that being said. This is lore accurate. Like, as much as I don't really agree with this, like, randomly placed part, this actually happens in lore, where basically Chief does remove his emotional tag. And you might say to yourself, I don't, I, I never make references about this in the games or, or things, but this is lore accurate. This is from the books that these Spartans did have these emotional suppressant things. And that's why like, Soren 
has emotions because he did remove it as well and he left right that he left when all that stuff was going on but the point is that chief does have this removed when he in the books the difference is he's not like some emotionally driven person all right he's he's someone that does feel emotion but he keeps it concealed because of his backstory as a character which it seems the show is not doing any of those things. It's like they're saying, so he moved his chip and now he can act more emotional. And one of the things he does, and I'm going to add, I'm going to get your opinions about this in a second, was that he, now he takes off this chip and now he can kind of finally feel emotion for the first time. He goes around town no, not wearing anything, right? Not wearing helmets, not wearing anything. Um, now, just to give everyone a perspective here, so he leaves his quarters goes downstairs. Everyone's like, oh, it's Chief. Uh, how you doing, Chief? And he's just walking around, like just walking around the hangar. Everyone's gambling and all that stuff. Then he leaves to go to the town on Reach, right? And this is where it starts getting interesting, where he's sitting on a train. He's like watching people like kiss or whatever. And then he gets to, to watch a musical, people just playing violin. What gets me weirded out, and it's kind of like interesting, is that Chief is supposed to be like a seven-foot dude. Like, he's, like, supposed to be some seven-and-a-half-foot guy because he's, like, a super soldier. He's grown. Hormones have grown him to be astron- astronomically huge, right? Um, now, granted, it's hard. You have to require CGI to do some things like that. So it caused, like, they made, they basically got Pablo Shriver to look really tall but not, like, that tall. So a Spartan wouldn't be just sitting on a bus next to people, like, just, like, riding on the bus, like, day-to-day, nine-to-five job, going to the town. Um, everyone, weird. everyone would be weird. looking at him like, "What the hell is this? like that's what the hell is that thing?" He's just sitting there. Oh, oh, he just lost Haki here. Um, <laughs> he couldn't take it anymore. He just couldn't take it anymore. Hopefully, we get him back. Oh, here we go. He got, he's got, he just got reconnected. Oh, thank goodness. Sorry. <laughs> thank you. No, he it's all good. He couldn't take it anymore. He's like, "I'm out. I'm out." <laughs> um, dude, but like, so, so he's just sitting on the bus nine to five, just like sitting on the bus, watching look, people watching and stuff, and. It was just kind of like, it, it just didn't make sense. Like, I get it. You're trying to have him like, and some people like that scene because it's like, this is the first time Chief is starting to feel emotion and he's like, doesn't know what to feel. Like, he's like, listen to music and he's just kind of like, like, I can feel emotion behind this now. And I, I, I get it. Some, I can get why some people would like that because they never see, like, they never seen Chief be emotional. But let me tell you, like, as much as people don't like Halo 4, or some people didn't, I guess you would say, had criticisms of Halo Infinite. But those games did a better job at showing Chief's emotion without him having to take off his helmet, take off his suit, and listen to music or watch people watch on trains. Like, they did that without having to see those things. They could have him have a conversation with the pilot and be like, you know, tell his side and what he feels and say, like, I failed many times, right? And I but I'm not going to fail you. And you feel that like him saying that means that like he's felt pain. He's felt loss. He's felt these things and he ain't losing that again. And that makes you feel emotion by them doing this. It doesn't make you feel like, Oh, she's starting to feel emotion now. Like it just makes you feel like this is just looks stupid. Like this is us. He's just sitting on a train. like just listening to music, petting a dog for the first time. Like, 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 what? Like, so I want to get your opinions on the scene because I, I just didn't think it was the best way to show Chief's emotion. But, uh, Lajel, okay, what's your opinion about this before we move forward? Uh, you also didn't mention that this scene went on for minutes. Like, this wasn't a- this was the equivalent of the pod race of, of, uh, of the Phantom <laughs> Menace. Like, <laughs> like, I, so I felt like I was watching the gambling scene stuff. from The Last Jedi. That's what I felt like I was watching. I didn't know it was lore until you told me. Um, but even if it is lore, the thing about removing your your emotional chip, so are we expecting to see an even more emotional? I know. He was already emotional. What are we talking about? Like, yeah, like we already saw. I don't think his chip was working. I think his chip had a malfunction because we were already seeing an emotional chip uh, chief the last two episodes. So, like, are we going to see an even more emotional chief? Please, no. And I understand what they were trying to do. You could cut that down in half. Yes. Uh, time to express what you were going to. Um, I just don't, like, if they're even changing his character even more going forward, that is a huge red flag to me. That's why I was really did not love this scene because 
like, wait a minute. Like, he wasn't emotional before? Like, this is the, like, he's going to be more emotional? Like, is he going to be more, you know, outburst and, and just acting super different? Like, that's the only thing that really concerns me about this. Um, so, yeah, like, I just love the things that they choose from lore, the things that I hate the most of the lore. So yeah. that's what they're gonna. That's what they're gonna do. Um, so that, that's, we, we need more of those. We need more master cheeks. No, no that's yeah. we need more of that lore. Yeah. But and, the significance yeah. is, you know, gaining chief's trust. Cortana doing it. I also find it weird that Cortana can have direct access to Halsey in Chief's brain. Like Halsey can go on a separate channel and talk to Halsey. Yeah, like he's like. Like I have a separate phone call, but you're in she's brain. How do you have a separate phone call with yeah. Halsey at the same time? And like, how does she appear? How does she appear in front of other people in Chief's brain? Like, if if they're gonna do this, that means she can only appear where Chief is, right? She can't just show up in another area. Like that means she has to be. She can only show up where Chief is, right? But she I can talk so. to Halsey though. I would, I would. I know think. she has a separate phone call that she could go to Halsey, yeah. but like she can't show up other places, can she? I, <laughs> I, I, I would, I would only hope. These yeah, things I don't mean. make sense, and so like the, the chief emotional thing. If he was stone cold and they did this, and then you started to see some changes, that would make more sense. Even though I still don't love it, like that makes more sense. You made chief emotional the last two episodes, and now you're removing the chip. So like. I don't understand. I don't no. understand. I, so, I don't, I yeah. So, Haki, what do you think about this? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I'm I'm on your guys' side here. Uh, you know, starting the scene off with Chief. You know, a whole lot of ass just in our face. <laughs> you know, I don't. I didn't really need that. After you know, kids kissing, weird scientists. And then you got Chief all caked up, you know, <laughs> taking the freaking, taking the, <laughs> taking the. No, we get, we're gonna get Master Master Dong. He's gonna come in next episode. <laughs> yeah. Master Donk, you know, like, yeah. he, like I didn't need all that, dude. Like it's no one's birthday. He was all caked up, you know, like I, <laughs> it was, it was too much. You like, uh, you know, I don't know if it was the lore, like they would the, you know the. Uh, the the chip or whatever the mechanism was in his lower back like couldn't it have been like That's his behind his neck his spine. yeah it's like connected There's, to his spine yeah, yeah. okay okay well, i mean doesn't the spine i mean i'm not i mean i don't want to say the wrong yeah, it goes all the way up his back it's in his lower back so i understand <laughs> yeah. dude i was getting mad nervous i don't like, understand she's like it's a little lower it's a little i was like <laughs> I was like, I, <laughs> how low are we going like, all right like, like, i don't understand like, fully like, naked. Oh i understand <laughs> I understand shirtless, right? Because you have to get to your lower back. Yeah, I just yeah. don't understand the full naked. Or just like, like in the middle of your back. Lower back and you I only like, like, <laughs> thought they're like, oh, lower, lower. I was like, <laughs> I was like, no, 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 not lower. <laughs> lower. Yeah, like, was, oh, okay. <laughs> it was mad weird, you know? Like, uh, and then, yeah, like the whole train scene and everything, like, I get, I get it. Like he took out the emotional chip. So like now he's like kind of feeling more human, I guess you can, you can say, you know, but kind of like what yeah. Phil said, you know, like he was acting super like emotional, like yep. just with the chip in, you know? So like, so now you're telling me that he's just never going to wear his mask and he's going to be super emotional. <laughs> this is not Master yeah, Chief, man. Nope. You know? no. Nope. This is not so, it. all right. So let's go to the next part. There's only two more points I want to make here. The, this next one is kind of tying into when he talks to the artifact, right? He gets memories from his childhood, and the second artifact apparently is on uh, a, the planet that he used to live on, and, and the name escapes me. Um, uh, you, 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 porcelain. I think it's what's called. Uh, uh, no, no. Sorry, I, I the Wait, name is. I the name the name is the name is completely wrong uh, that uh, uposlin is a different thing but so basically this is his old home planet is basically where the second artifact is and he asks cortana and halsey about this planet uh, really cortana about the planet and cortana tells him that basically the planet is uninhabited like it, it, there's no one living there anymore because apparently there was a plague that was there right and a plague had wiped out the population and he asked what a what about my parents? I asked about my parents. And he says, I think everyone's gone, right? Including your parents are dead, right? Now, what I thought this was could be very interesting, right? 
is they're using this is lore accurate okay so this is another lore accurate thing which i found to be interesting she mentions the fact that the unsc used protocol uh obsolin or or obsolin basically it means that it's the unsc contains the planet basically almost puts like a shield around it to contain viruses without it ever escaping now when i heard that they did this protocol obsolin or is basically a protocol that the unsc used when stopping flood from getting outside of the planet right now that gets me very intrigued because i want to see are they already one are they already introducing the flood to the show which is first off i one i i, I would like to see the flood but i i would also be concerned because this is way early like way early into the show you're introducing the flood now granted i think that would excite me to see uh, a, a lore accurate villain come back into the fray um other than the covenant which is I, like you said we all said before the covenant are probably the best group that we get to watch because they're the most lore accurate to a certain degree and they bring excitement if the flood is introduced that would also bring another faction that's excluding the rebels because it would feel that the rebels at this point are like useless um the rebels the covenant with maquis the unsc and then you add the flood you're having a fourth group to, to this party and now you're going to bring more excitement in my opinion but i want to get your idea about one did you like this concept that they were building that like all right we're going to go to this planet to go find this artifact and that there's a possible this plague could be the flood do you like this do you think this early this early in the show do you like that like possibly this flood could make this appearance um i kind of want to get your thoughts about it so uh let's go hockey first what do you think about this this concept? Yeah, so um, I I think that this was one of the positives that I forgot to mention before. I think that uh, it's a cool concept. I think it, it, it. I'm torn because I think it's the flood. I think it would be cool if the flood was mentioned, but I don't think that it would be okay or they can pull it off if the flood is actually there because if they can't pull off any action in the last two episodes they can't pull off real good cgi um of the elites and and you know either close combat or um you know distance combat of the elites i couldn't even imagine them perfecting the flood uh at least this early like you're saying uh into the storyline so um, I think it would be cool if there was remnants on the flood or proof that the flood had been there or done something. Um, but I don't think the flood being there and chief running into the flood right away, uh, it would be the right move, but I hope it is the flood. And, um, I hope there is some remnants or, uh, you know, something that proves that the flood was that plate. Mm -hmm. So Angelica, what do you think? I agree. I actually don't want the flood to be shown this early um, in the show. I guess, you know, remnants would be okay, but it would make me very nervous if the flood is introduced at this time um, because we just don't have a lot of, like, they're not building enough characters that they already have. Um, I, I really want more Covenant characters. I really, really do. And uh, I think they should start there first um, before, you know, bringing the flood into the fold. So I am a little nervous, uh, similar to what Haki said. If it is the flood and it's remnants of the flood, um, don't full blow, you know, introduce the flood. You know, kind of create that uncertainty. I think that would be a smart decision. Or it could be, you know, UNSC lies and it kind of revealing that UNSC is dark, that they just wiped them out, um, all the people there, and they just said it was a plague, you know, type of thing. Um, that could be another thing that, that it could be. Um, so I think it, it it does create an interesting dynamic. It really does. Um, but I don't I don't want the flood to be full boat released. Um, I would really really want. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna go back to, but the, the covenant is going over to Metropole. Um, I want to see covenant characters outside of Maki and the prophets. Like that to me is is a huge priority, um, and I hope mm -hmm. that it it happens before the flood introduced. I think the flood needs to be part of the show at some point, but. I think right now is a little early. Yeah, so uh, just to kind of build off of that, the last part of this, 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 uh, you know, this, this show was that 
basically Master Chief is talking in the back. It's, oh, it's basically narrating, kind of talking with Cortana, Halsey, um, and he, Halsey is actually talking with the the assistant, the creepy assistant, about you know Chief. Can we control him? And and all the like, if we if we can't control him, then the whole house comes crumbling down, including us, including including my creepy ass. Um, and you know. It, what I want to talk about is it sets up the story of three separate arcs at the same time. It sets up the the fact that you're getting Quan and you're getting Soren going to Magical. You're also going to get, like you just mentioned, that the Covenant is going to Magical because Maki says, "All right, I found. We're gonna. I'm gonna go back to where the first artifact was found at Magical. So that means that technically you're gonna have Quan Soren facing off against Venture and the Rebels." And the Covenant may be showing up as well at the same time, which could be a pretty interesting, you know, side story here. At the same time, Chief is now going back to his home planet, which was covered with the plague, with Halsey, which is a surprise, and Cortana with Silver Team, I believe, is also going to be there with him. Could be wrong about Silver Team, but I yeah, would I hope Silver Team. Silver Team is there. It I would be great. It would be great because I mean, Captain Halsey's going there and Chief's going there, and Cortana. It'd be great if Silver well, why Team went. Why can't we get? Why can't we get a separate scene with Silver Team fighting Covenant? Is that I, crazy? I, I, I mean, I, I guess crazy. CG. I don't know if CG can handle that though, and Joe Kill. I mean, it might be a little too much, but so. But the point I'm making here is is that this last scene sets Episode Four to be that action-packed episode that we've been wanting, right? And just to give everyone a heads up. Season the, the episode four trailer shows Chief and don't we don't want to get all of our hypes up now, but Chief was wearing his armor in every scene I saw. He was wearing full helmet, no nudity. He wasn't wearing just a helmet and no no pants or anything. <laughs> full just everything shaking, just, just a lot of things shaking. <laughs> every everything was being worn. I saw a lot of scenes of like Chief's like like childhood stuff with meeting Halsey. I saw scenes of like Quan and Soren facing off against rebels. I I didn't see much. Co- I didn't see much Covenant like combat. I, I didn't see like I, this is just a trailer. I saw the Covenant like showing up against for something, but I saw a lot of stuff that looked enticing, which is part of the reason why I kind of my score went up a little bit from before, because it made me say, okay, this episode sets up something good, right? It sets up possible possible things that could be very interesting. If they land it the right way for episode four, because chief wearing his armor for damn sake a whole time got me like, are they actually going to do like that feeling where it's like chief actually has his armor. And he's like, I just give everyone a heads up a scene where it shows like chief, I guess it's like he's deep in his memories. It's like chief is sitting next to like his childhood self and he's wearing his full armor. And the kid is like sitting on the floor. Like it's like something inter- like you're like, that sounds like something deep is about to happen with Chief, with Chief, and so it sets up something interesting. And that's the last part. It sets up something. I want to get your take on. Do you think that this last scene does set it up well, and does it make you interested in seeing what happens in the next episode, or is it really just like I've gotten tricked into thinking something good was going to happen already, and maybe this is just like a bait to just make me want to go see the next one? So I want to get your opinion. So Linjo Kill, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, let's round it off like this. I do feel like I felt the entire show just being cautious on what's coming. I'm actually not as optimistic as I was after the first episode, uh, going into obviously episode two. Um, And episode three just didn't do enough for me to get excited, that excited. So I'm just going to be cautious going into this fourth episode. I hope it is action packed. Um, I really do. I can't imagine a lot of action unless the flood is on that on that planet. I feel like it's going to be a lot of chief in full gear walking around his old house and, and you know like you know roaming. Um, but I do have faith that the rebel part of the story could be action packed, um, especially if the covenant is involved. But I will say this, and I know we're going to go out key, Marsman. You had two things that you said were going to turn you off the show for good. One of them didn't have close, but didn't have a clone brain got turned into an AI. But do you remember what the second one was? When yes. When key becomes the Arbiter's Ark. And after last ep- this past episode, 
I feel more and more confident that you are right that she could be the arbiter of the covenant and because we've given no signs of any other covenant characters i'm going into this new episode very nervous that the dynamic has been set that's who the covenant characters are the prophets and maquis and just a bunch of guards and then everybody else has been set are we going to get introduced to new characters especially on the covenant and so that's what makes me very there's and and, and how, yeah so hockey let you go first and now finish off with just responding to, to my yeah fingers. so that's actually that was gonna be my point what Langelic Hill uh, said I I think that um I mean with what's happened in the last just two episodes with no you know with with no action I would be very very surprised that there is no action at all in this next episode um and I think Langelic Kill made a very good point about Maki becoming the arbiter. Like you said, we have not seen uh, a real true um, arbor esque person or just any other elite or, or brewer, any other covenant, not even a literally, not even a jackal, right? They messed that one up too. So I think um, Langella Kill has got it right. I, I think Maki's going to be the arbiter, uh, which that's only, that's only half uh mars man of, of what you're saying so you know <laughs> I, I i know you look very shocked right now but let's you know at least at least cortana's not a human being and thank god she didn't get kissed when she was frozen um but i mean this next episode's got to be action-packed it's got to be oh, uh, uh, i think oh. the rebels are going to be i think there's going to be action in the rebels i think there's going to be action on chief's home planet too maybe he runs into um not the flood but maybe he runs into maybe a covenant um outlier or something like that uh it's got to be action i mean the last two episodes there was zero action so i mean i'm, I'm hoping i'm like i said before i'm hoping not to go six two six three six four i hope this next episode is action-packed and if it's action-packed it'll be in the sevens for me so just to give my final take on this whole thing, um, my and I agree with you that my fear is that Maki will take the mantle of of the Arbiter. Not in saying the Arbiter to be the Arbiter itself, but Arbiter's story plot. Where it's, if you don't know the story of Halo, basically Arbiter was a leading general for the Covenant and, and basically the invasion of Reach and also the attacking of the Pillar of Autumn when they fled from Reach where Chief was fighting on the ring. Arbiter fails. They ban it. They basically brand him as a heretic. He then has a redemption arc to try to save his like his his honor basically and in essence finds out the truth gets basically banished. He makes his story arc and you know comes back from that right. My fear is that Maquis will become that or becoming more in the like this is a possibility not only is it a possibility but it seemed likely that it would happen because the fact is you both said it we haven't been introduced to one single alien character yet and they we all know outside the that, prophets other than the prophets we yeah. all know that they have done research because they've done lore things my fear is that they are going to basically take the art that was a great story plot that they did and then use it to build off Maquis' story because it doesn't seem like Maquis is a one-off character. It doesn't seem like they're just going to wipe her out after one season. I feel like this is a long-running character. They're building some backstory. My fear is, is that when they do introduce the Arbiter, the Arbiter is going to take the place of Tartarus, which is basically the second command for the tr for the Prophets, who is the villain, right? Um, and I think that they're going to make Maquis become sent become more of a sentimental character by the end of season one and the start of season two will be the art the arbiter arc for her like she will be basically questioning the prophets and their i like you know what this is what I, i'll make my bold take now what i think is going to happen with the story season one's going to end with maki failing to stop the master chief she's going to be branded as being the heretic or someone that is the non-believer or someone that is failed like the arbiter had failed at the end of the first game, and then she's gonna be branded as you. Oh, you want to make your honor back? You got to do missions for us, and maybe you can get your honor back. 
the prophets will then basically toss her aside because we don't need you. And then she's going to do her arc to make her come back. And, and I'm going to throw up. So th that's, that's the story of what's going to happen. And I'm angry about it. And I'm nervous about it, but it's not going to be answered next episode. I think it's going to be done by the end of the season. I think that's when we'll know when, last, how much am I interested? Last, last comment I want to ask the panel before I know we've been going a while. Um, what do you guys think of the profits? Um, again, I actually think the covenant is the best part of the show so far. Um, but the only concerning part besides the lack of, I mean, you know, I, you guys make a good point about the Arbiter arc and like, they're going to maybe introduce a, a, an elite that is kind of the antagonist. Like I, I actually, like, I don't want that to happen, but can we at least get an elite that is an antagonist? Can we get, you know, a commander of brutes, a commander of jackal, a commander of elite, you know, can we get, you know, a little bit deeper on the covenant, just a little bit deeper, like instead of just making it the prophets and mercy is the only guy who has separated himself from the prophets, yeah. right? Like it's, it's mercy and a couple dudes, right? Like it doesn't feel like there's three distinguishable, distinguishable this, bosses. This, this doesn't feel, yeah, this character. doesn't, first off, this doesn't feel that this is a, a covenant or a collection of species that all believe the same thing. Right. That's the point of what the covenant is. It's a it's a there's a bunch of species of aliens that united to basically believe in a ideology of religion that they have a council. They have all these things that make up the covenant. And it feels like they are forgetting the entire concept that you have other species of aliens other than the prophets and the elites. You have a lot more that you're missing out on. And why would you give me a scene where? You know, they're discussing, you know, the humans and this artifact and they bring it to the council, the great chamber where all, all these aliens are sitting in the in their in the in their seats like and they're all talking and the and the prophets are talking about what they found And Maquis is going to be sent to go and retrieve the artifact for them. And this is the plan. Like they didn't do any of that. Like, you know, give me a scene with the council. Give me a scene with these other aliens. And they're all sitting there discussing their next plan. Like. It feels like, like you said, mercy is the only one that talks differently than everyone else. Truth and regrets uh, sound exactly the same, and they don't. They, there's no distinction, right? You're not giving me any of the other characters other than the fact that mercy, Maki, and that's it. That's all the characters you have. You have two elites honor guards that look identical to every other one, right? Don't look any different, right? And they don't sound different. They don't do anything different. They just are the same. Everyone's the same, and. I'm not saying for you to make to, to, to like overload your GPUs when you make your CGI, but come on, you can you can make more than just two characters, or you can make more than just two species of alien. Like you could you could do more than that. Well, we and, saw the hunter, right? Like it shows, like are they they're willing they know to they they them. mentioned the grunts, they mentioned jackals. They, we know that they understand that there's two more than two. We we know you did your damn research. We know it. We know you did as much as you want to claim you never played a video game. I get it. But you read books, you did your research, you just wing it. You just wing this show. You know what you're doing, right? You're just like, and they show the, the high charity. Like you did like that, that stuff looked cool. You showed high charity. You show high charity. Show the Council of Aliens, show that stuff because they, it, it appeals to the people who are watching your damn show. Give me a uh, unique general. Let's, let's be real here. Fun. Let's be real here. The, the people who are watching this show and Right now, iMob has the show at a 7.7 .7 overall, right? Saying rating IMBD. seven IMBD, sorry, 7.7 .7 overall, one of the higher rated shows currently being watched, right? We know who's watching the show? It's the Halo fans are watching your show, right? And whether some of them are being sick to their stomach and some of them are enjoying it, the point is they're all Halo fans. You know how you make them all happy? You become more lore accurate. You show more aliens. You do things like that. Easy. Layups. Like, well, that's why I never understood. And I'll do a whole content video about all that stuff. But I never understood about the writers of the show was you have good writing already made. You have good characters already made. You have, you know, just good, good pacing already made. Take that stuff and just use it. Like if you're in association with three for three Microsoft. They own that stuff by you using a character from the lore and, and copy it doesn't mean they're going to sue you. They want you to. Like That's the point. They want to promote their game. They don't want you to create some brand new story that people are going to be creeped out on 
when they well, play, no, they watch hear, all of them is just for the general audience. This is why they're doing it. It doesn't seem like general. it because I, I don't think Rock the general Tomatoes audience has, them, has the user score at fifty seven. The user score. I don't know if the general audience is going to like the fact I'm watching two kids make out uh, a scientist try to kiss a, a clone body that's frozen and master cheeks. I don't think that's going to appeal to a general audience. Right? I don't think that's making you know someone who never watched no a show with no action, just a talking show with master cheeks. That's all we're doing. Um, you know, like that's it. Just doesn't appeal to anything. Like it's it don't appeal to the Halo fans. Doesn't appeal to the common audience. Like do stuff that will appeal because it. And this is the same thing you can say about like the Witcher. You know who's driving the show? Witcher fans, right? That's who's driving the show. So you do one thing that's against lore, you're gonna feel the the backlash of it. It's the same thing here. Yeah, um, but I feel that they're closer to lore than than this show is with. They are Halo, and yet they still got blasted for doing one thing that was different. Yeah, they got blasted for it, but all of a sudden this show does something that's completely different, changes the character, main character of the whole story to be completely different and that's the point it's just it doesn't make sense um any last words from you guys just before we finish out here i got one and that word yeah. word is action that's it uh, let's get action oh two action and like man just angela kills it covenant unless she needs more fun let's cheat angela kill scott it action covenant that's it yeah. Let, 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 less cheeks. Let's get less cheeks out and here. Give me, give me more of Chief not talking. Give me more. I, I give that. me more of Chief giving dirty looks, having his mask on, giving nods. You know, give like physical cues on being a badass because I think he has it in him. Like, yeah. Well, like listen. I saw it in the first episode. Can I just get more of the first episode? Like, that's literally... Can I get more action, like, in the first episode? Which wasn't a lot. No, but, like, but can it I was get still something, yeah. But listen, I, I'll say this. The trailer gets you excited to at least see what they're doing for episode four. And I would highly suggest you guys watch it because I want people to get, a, get our feelings, understand why we say what we say. Trust me, we're not just saying things to be sour grapes, to be dark clouds. We're saying these things because we're Halo fans and we, we kind of want to see things change or be adjusted in some way. So trust me, we're not negative Nancy's. If you look at us, we always support and we try to be critical and provide good feedback on things. So this is just our our feelings when we watch the show. So please make sure you go watch it. But for just to finish out and close out the show, thank you everyone for tuning in for for watching our episodes here. We've been this is episode three, so we're chugging along. We've been doing review episodes every week, roundtables. So if you haven't watched the show yet, um, I would highly suggest you do so. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting the Mars Band Gaming Channel and the Mars Band Crew. And if you if you have not done so yet, please make sure you drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content because. We drop a lot of content videos, a lot of live streams, and a lot of just gaming in general. There's a lot of fun games coming out soon, so I'm looking forward to playing that and have you guys watch. But that's going to be it for us here at Mars Bank Gaming. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you for watching. This is Mars Bank Gaming signing off. Peace.